Hey, Biology 2 students. I hope to see many of you at the Zoom meeting tomorrow at 1030. That's Tuesday, 1030. And if you can't make that, I'll be generating a survey afterwards. And, and so please give me your input there if you can. And today I'm going to cover um, phylum Annelida just in one shot and we'll be moving on. There are a couple reasons why I don't want to overlook them and um, I'm really glad you guys went out and dug up worms. I'm kind of excited that you did that and I've uh, read a few of them, put a few grades in. That's my next plan um, when I'm done here. I'm hoping to be able to go home and get grading for Bio 1 and Bio 2 um, assignments that we're due in. And so just keep plugging away. Don't get stressed out. Don't get overwhelmed. Remember to breathe. This is new to all of us. So you're just going to try to pace yourself and do the work you can do in each of your classes. Just kind of check in on your grades. See that you're moving them uh, in the direction you want to move them. And don't, don't over fret. There are going to be things you can't do because you don't have access to this, that, or the other. It didn't work out that day, but we're doing what we can with what we've got. It's a brave new experiment, and so here we are. So, as a matter of fact, I was hoping to get this uh, video done for you earlier today, but those sorts of things were coming up. But I'm here now for you, and I'll, uh, we'll keep checking in with each other. So, there are two reasons why, why phylum Annelida is worth your time, and I'm going to tell you about that pretty quickly. So the first is they have really helped us understand genetics. And the way they helped us figure it out is because um, looking at them develop um, from embryos into earthworms, uh, people who would do such a thing um, were, at, were, were really curious about these segments that they have and how those develop. And watching those develop, once we got to the point that we could look at genetics, they started going, oh, and a lot of things about how more complex animals develop started to make some sense. So I want to talk about that today. And then the second part has to do with your next assignment. And your next assignment, I think is going to be fun. I think you're going to really enjoy it. And it'll be an assignment that's going to have a kind of an ongoing aspect through the semester. And if it musses up the first time, you can start it over and try again. And I, I hope that you really like it. So first, let's talk about this little earthworm. So there are different annelids, and if you looked at the video, you got to see some of the ocean ones that are really pretty. There's all sorts of variety. But for us, probably going to think of, if you fish, you might be thinking of leeches. Those are segmented worms, too. But we're just going to kind of frame this in terms of an earthworm. Because you had a coloring page. Hey, if you couldn't color it, if you could color it, and you have some app uh, suggestions for online coloring, that would be great. If you couldn't do it, you know, I think part of this is just try to have fun in learning how to problem solve, getting the things done. If you got a printer at home, then it was easy. So, so I will be pushing out lots of different assignments for you to do, and some of them you're going to be able to grab a hold of and do a lot with, and I think that will even things out. So what you're going to do is the best you can with what you've got. And so there should be enough different types of things for you that, that it will all be good. Okay, so let's talk about this um, humble little earthworm. First, I'm going to declare this the head end of it. And so um, since this is the head, we could say this is the cephalic region. And on the other end, the tail is the caudal. Caudal means tail, C-A-U. Oh, okay. And I know that's a kind of sad little earthworm, but the squigglies are just helping me represent that it has segments. I know it's not a very good drawing. So I'm going to put through here, if we were on the inside of the body, the digestive system that goes through. So it's got that complete digestive system. Digestive system runs through, and the organs are getting more complex in this animal relative to those flatworms that we did before. So let's just look at the head region a little. And I want you to know that there's more cephalization of the ganglia. So there's more ganglia. And I was put on boo. 
up and down. It's just gangly up there. And this has a ventral nerve cord. And the nerve cord is running more. This nerve cord runs more rapidly through. This is a faster moving animal. So it's got a bigger nerve cord and, and things move. And information runs through it faster up to the head region. And you got to play with your earthworm a little and see that it could tell what was going on when you did stuff that maybe it didn't want you to do so much. It could avoid you quite well. Okay, so that's a, a nervous system. Uh, system, more ganglia and a ventral. I said it right? Ventral. Nerve cord. Okay, so remember our directions that you labeled because you did your ventral and your dorsal, right? And then we have all these segments. So I'm just going to go like this to kind of represent. Oh, I'll do them bigger, actually, for my drawing. I just remembered what I needed to do with this. So I'm going to kind of give some more space in between these to tell you about these segments. And something to know about these segments is in all the way down the beast, it's going to have segments. And some of the segments are taking on some specializations. For example, several segments in the front, and you colored these in, are going to have these thickened muscle areas along the circulatory system. And we could loosely call those hearts. So they aren't complex like our heart, but they are the most complex um, sort of a heart or aortic pump that we've seen yet. So that's to pump blood through the animal because it's a bigger animal. It's gonna take some more, some more work to get um, the nutrients circulating. So when food is digested, it's going to go into a bloodstream, this closed bloodstream of this animal, and it's going to get pumped through hearts. Okay. And they are located, the hearts are located towards the cephalic region. And that makes sense because the ganglia are going to need to have lots of oxygen, lots of food supply. So, so you know, the, the major supplier is located close to the head. So for the circulatory system, multiple hearts, near, caudal, oh no, that's the wrong one, oops, not caudal, cephalic region. So we're just playing now with the vocabulary that you're learning. And pump blood, supplying nutrients and oxygen. So you need that oxygen for the mitochondria to, to um, make ATP to give you the energy to use the nutrients to make proteins, to make more body parts and to sustain the animal and to help it move it, move it. Okay, I gotta look at my notes. Where am I now? Uh, pause. So I also wanted to add that, I don't think it shows up in the drawing you did, but there are within each segment, you also have peripheral nerves. That just means nerves that branch out from the center. Peripheral nerves. Oh. In each segment. And then on your coloring page, they actually were using green on your coloring page, I think, or I asked you to use green. Mm, try again. There was green on the, the, um, the um, link I sent you to represent the excretory system. 
excretory system also is going to have, um, and I'm not sure if it's in every compartment or if it's more lower down or more up in the front, but in each section, there is a link to um, uh, excretory, um, what were they called, uh, nephridia, uh, something that, so it's nephridia, and then the, the smaller ones are like, I don't know, milli nephridia or mini nephridia, I can't remember the name, you'd have to look, okay, but excretory system, also has, is also compartmentalized in each section. So it has a central channel of nephridia, but just that it has something central tying things together, as do the hearts, as does the nervous system, and this one, and also compartmental, um, uh, I can't remember what they're called, this, blah, blah, you look it up, blah, 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 pretty, uh, and so this is like where the action's really happening, where they can really, um, so this is like the highway, the channel for, of operation, but this is where, uh, I'm going to call it Millie, but I know that's not the name, so you can check my work. You don't have to know the name. I want you to know the concept. Okay, and, and this is where um, what's happening here, cellular waste is removed. Okay. So, so what? Why are we doing worms? Remember that I told you that one of the two reasons that annelids are worth your time is that they have massively helped our understanding of genetics. How, from figuring out, I'm just reading what I wrote, um, how their segments develop embryologically. So how do these segments develop and like, what, what's that all about? So what has been found out about these is that there is a sequence and the sequence tends to run Tends to the, the sequence is starting kind of with development at the head and piece by piece more development this way of certain components that we can now locate on genes and the type of genes that are saying, hey, the hearts go here, the ganglia is going here, the hearts are going here, and we need one in each segment. Those are called homeobox genes. And, and, uh, abbreviation of a type of homeobox genes is called a Hox gene. And that's the easiest way to remember it. And it's H-O-X. And I'm going to be giving you a little bit of information on Hox genes because that's like why it's important a little bit more than just that, oh, worms. Okay. And so these homeobox genes, what, what researchers, once they found them, they started realizing a couple things. One, in more developed animals, like more complex than an earthworm. Earthworms got them. They've even found them in, in some of the flatworms, so they have them too. But in earthworms, looking at these compartments is really easy to do and seeing, oh, repeated themes is easy to do. And then they, it was fairly easy for them to find the gene that was making those hearts be developed. And so they can take the genetic information and look for the repeat. And, but more interesting, is they can look at those genes in other organisms and find out they've got the same homeobox genes, you know, to turn on the making of a heart. Now, it might be a more developed heart. It could be a more developed heart. When we get into bigger animals, that's what we're looking for. But the homeobox genes for triggering the onset of embryological development is there in the worm and in um insects and in birds and mammals and reptiles and amphibians. And so that's, um, we, we started by looking at segments and going, how's that happening? Why is that happening? Clearly it's a gene triggering, getting turned on, getting turned on, getting turned on. And we see that with the nervous system and we see it with the excretory system. And then what we'll see happens in more complex animals is that instead of having multiples, we're gonna start scrunching some of these things together into, instead of multiple little hearts, hey, let's make 
a big honk and complex heart and use that. See how that works out. And so we'll uh, talk about more of that later, but I think that's enough for worms for now, except that I did tell you there was two reasons why worms are worth your while. And part two has to do with your next assignment. So there's going to be a couple things I do. I am going to put you, put out to you some nerdy homeo box information. That's really schooly. So don't freak, but it's kind of cool. I'll give you, um, I'm hoping to be able to push forward two very short videos on it and then a little bit of written material. So, so some of us get kind of catch on to things in different ways. And then then there's the long-term project that I want to tell you about. Now, the other reason worms can be super important to us and are super worth our while is even though most of the um, earthworms in the United States actually are invasive species and they've like shoved out the, I guess, pre-existing worms, we can still be really thankful for worms because they uh, do us a big service, as you probably learned when you're itty-bitty. They're turning the soil a lot, and the poo that comes out of their poo hole in their complete digestive system is is um, providing really rich soil for us. So so that without earthworms we would be we'd be in a bind because they really do a great job of providing nutrients in our soils. So yay to the earthworms. And so why do we want rich soil? So we can plant things. So your long term assignment well first let me I erased it because I had to get this but your long-term assignment has to do with, it said long-term assignment in reason number two. So let's just put down reason number two before I get too excited about your long-term assignment. Okay, so reason number two that, we looked earlier that, reason two, two reasons phylum Annelida is worth your time, is that they majorly improve soil fertility so yay to the worms and I'm going to give you a video link or maybe two if I get super excited some fresh ideas on how you could plant some things in ways maybe you hadn't thought of before now it's going to be helpful if you have things like potting soil and some gardening tools but if you don't you can still make this work, okay? So we can dig things up with, with um, shoot, empty, empty can, like vegetable cans or whatever. You can use a lot of things, just get innovative. We're gonna do minor planting. If you have rich, if you have um, some, some potting soil that you can use, that's great because it uh, allows for a little more drainage, but that's one reason that Zoom might be helpful or you can always email me if you're running into some stumpers. But I'm gonna um, show you this video that I thought was just really inspiring and gives all sorts of ideas for quick ways to grow a thing. And then what you can do with that project is just run with it. You could decide you're gonna try to grow a whole lot of things and document that or you can grow one or two things and you're measuring it and you're showing growth pattern over the, the period of the rest of the semester showing what happens. And if something dies, you do not have to go, oh my gosh, there goes my grade. No, you record that and you try again. And so we're just gonna try to systematically grow something for fun, record it for points, and I think it's gonna be great. So, I think I told you what I came to tell you, and I'm under my 20 minutes I was hoping to stick to. So, I really hope that I get to see a lot of you on uh, tomorrow, on Tuesday at 10.30 in the morning for our first Zoom, and um, you take care of you and your family. See you soon.